Primarchs have a reputation to uphold. They are not the regular Joe Schmo that has a standard power armor. They are the gene sires of the Astartes warriors and therefore they should be clad in a way specifically designed for each of them. Each have their own strengths and weaknesses and their power armors must enhance their talents and not subdue them or lessen them. So here in this video we will discuss each of the demigods own unique armors with many of them being artificers and also terminator suits each that have been personalized and reconfigured to fit these huge beasts among men. Anyway, let's get to it. Number 1. Alpharius Omegon, the Artificer Pythian Scales While Alpharius often wore the standard armor of his legion in battle, he also led his forces wearing the Pythian Scales, making it clear to all that a Primarch was present. This ancient and mythical armor from Terra's past could effortlessly deflect blades, energy blasts and alchemical attacks. It had silver trims, scale plates, a helm adorned with bronze serpents, and an emerald hydra on the chest. Number 2. Vulcan The Artificer Draken Scales This was a formidable power armor which offered him exceptional defense against energy-based weapons and flames, with specialized flamers integrated into his gauntlets. While the armor itself was highly revered and renowned within the Imperium, its most prominent feature was the inclusion of the skull of the renowned fire drake Kesare, proudly displayed on his shoulders. It was also the biggest armor, a personal armor, aside from that of the emperors. Number 3. Jagatai Khan The Artificer Wildfire Panoply Armor So the space mongol armor, the Wildfire Panoply, worn by Jagatai Khan, was a visually striking power armor that combined both beauty and impenetrability. It flawlessly matched his swift and relentless combat approach and incorporated several exclusive systems that further enhanced the Primarch's already unparalleled reflexes. It was golden in color with red markings as well as having fur on the boots and on the chest. Number 4. Perturabo The Logos Terminator Armor This was an exceptional and extensively tailored Terminator armor crafted for Perturabo. It featured advanced command and control mechanisms that established a cybernetic connection between Perturabo and all units under his command. Additionally, it boasted a versatile assortment of weapons and auxiliary systems conceived by Perturabo himself. Notable among these were a teleportation beacon and a forearm mounted sharpener bolter cannon referred to as the Logos Array. Number 5. Mortarion The Barbaran Plate Terminator Armor This is a unique power armor developed by Primarch Mortarion, blending advanced power armor technology with his distinctive background. This armor was specifically crafted to enhance Mortarion's unique physiology and accommodate his specific environmental requirements. By combining the air he breathes with traces of the toxic vapors found on his homeworld of Barbarus, the armor synthesized a suitable atmosphere for him and also enhanced his durability. Number 6. Horus Lupercal The Serpent Scales Terminator Armor So the War Master would have one of the most powerful armors, that's for sure. The Serpent Scales was a distinctive Terminator armor exclusively worn by Horus. As one of the early prototypes of its kind, it underwent constant re-enhancements by the renowned fabricated general Kelbor Hall and the most skilled artificers of the Imperium. It featured an ornamental pelt obtained from a wolf that Horus had personally vanquished on the planet of Davin. Number 7. Sanguinius, the Regalia Resplendent, an Artificer Armor This was an intricately adorned power armor crafted from golden materials and exclusively donned by Primarch Sanguinius. It was widely believed that the Emperor himself had personally forged this extraordinary suit, tailored to fit Sanguinius' distinctive physique, which means the wings. The armor offered unparalleled defense while allowing the Primarch unrestricted movement during his flight. Number 8. Corvus Corax, the Artificer Sable Armor This was an exceptionally advanced armor designed specifically for Corax by the Emperor's skilled artisans. This remarkable suit possessed advanced capabilities such as concealing Corax's sensor presence and interfering with enemy sensors. Also with transmissions, teleportation beacons and location markers within a close proximity. Additionally, it integrated seamlessly with Corax's advanced jump pack known as the Corvidine Pinions. Number 9. Fulgrim The Artificer Gilded Panoply Beautifully crafted as are all the Primarch's Artificer armors, Fulgrim's was an ornate armor in golden and purple elements. 
Since Fulgrim, like Jagatai Khan and the Lion, were excellent blade warriors, the Gilded Panoply, which is its armor, was designed to give Fulgrim free reign to use his phenomenal speed and agility in battle. One would say that he is slightly armored and hence an easier target, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Number 10. Lion L. Johnson The Artificer Leonine Panoply This was the pre-heresy armor of the Lion. It paid homage to his original Caliban armor, showcasing both formidable efficiency and serving as a fitting regalia for the first Primarch. The centerpiece of this panoply was the revered Lion Helm, incorporating an ancient field projector. The sacred object of the Dark Angels chapter now takes the form of a winged Mark VII Aquila power armor helmet, carried by a watcher in the dark. The helmet features a built-in protective force field that can be activated independently of its wearer. Number 11. Magnus the Red The Horn Rayman Magnus possesses a distinctive power armor that transcends mere physical constructions and appears to embody both tangible psychic force and ethereal energy. Its form and appearance were subject to will and constantly shifting and adapting. Despite its seemingly primitive aesthetic, the armor provided unparalleled protection, rendering Magnus impervious to even the most brutal ranged and melee weaponry. Number 12. Ruburi Gilliman The Artificer Armor of Fate This is a custom-made set of Artificer armor exclusively redesigned for the revived Ruburi Gilliman. It was meticulously crafted by the Adeptus Mechanicus under the guidance of Archmagus Belisarius Call over a span of nearly 10,000 years. Incorporating state-of-the-art life-sustaining technologies, this magnificent armor not only perfectly fits Gilliman, but also provides unmatched protection against even the most devastating attacks. Number 13. Rogal Dawn, the Auric Armor Gifted by the Emperor himself to Dawn as the protector of Terra, the Auric Armor is a one-of-a-kind as it is made from the same material as that of the Emperor's own armor, made from Auramite, a vastly more powerful and durable material than Ceramite. Adorned in burnished copper and gold and sporting a red velvet cloak with an eagle wing motive on his war gear, his shoulder armor made from auric adamantium alloy mirrored the Emperor's own combat attire. Number 14. Angron, the gladiatorial armor of Mars The demon prince of Khorne wasn't always a crazy-ass demon. He was actually a crazy-ass gigantic man, a demigod as well with butcher's nails that further drive his insanity. Nevertheless, Angron owned his own special armor, a power armor called the Armor of Mars. It was specifically crafted by the artificers of the 12th Legion from the gladiatorial armor in which he fought as a Nusarian slave. Number 15. Lorgar The Artificer Armor of the Word Megamind here with a big shiny head also had his own armor, which didn't really make him any more powerful since he is still the weakest. Just wanted to put it out here because I hate him. The Armor of the Word is a colossal suit of Artificer Armor which follows the Maximus pattern, a space marine type of power armor, and features defensive field generators. Adorned with ancient Colchician sigils, the armor is inscribed with Lorgar's chaos-infused words of protection. Number 16. Conrad Curse The Artificer Nightmare Mantle This is a specifically tailored Artificer armor of the Night Haunter. It was adorned with gruesome trophies and inflate skins of individuals whose sins were deemed exceptionally heinous or remarkable. Upon his capture on Makrak during the heresy, Curse's fellow Primarchs seized the Nightmare Mantle from him. Later, after reuniting with the Night Lords on Sagualsa, a crude imitation of the power armor was crafted which Curse wore until his demise by M. Shen. Number 17. Ferris Manus, the Medusan Carapace. This was an armor ensemble created by Ferris Manus himself and utilized by the Primarch during the Dropside Massacre. Beyond being a mere suit of armor, it incorporated numerous server mechanisms and auxiliary systems. The outfit was equipped with various integrated armaments, including a plasma blaster, a graviton gun, grenade harness, and a heavy flamer. It was also larger and bulky, worthy of leading the Iron Hands into battle. Number 18. Lehman Russ The Artificer Armor of Elavagar The warplate worn by Lehman Russ, the leader of the Space Wolves, originates from a period of secretive conflicts within the 6th Legion. This is a distinctive artificer armor. Enclosed within the armor are unique exothermic field generators, a technology unfamiliar to the Imperium. These devices harness surrounding energy, extracting heat and kinetic potential, resulting in a chilling aura that can be invoked by the Primarch at will. 
This effect earned the armor the name Elavagar among the Fenrisians, meaning or symbolizing a little wave of frost. So those are all the 18 Primarchs armor types. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Do hit that like button for support and subscribe, but most of all, smash that bell icon for regular updates and new videos here on this channel. Take care, boys!